great millstone led the men up under him to do is going out of their way to justify hatred towards brothers, right? You taught me hatred towards people that I never knew. He told us Zabak is an adulterer, right? Said all forms of evil about Zabak. But then when I get the testimony from the man, and y'all know who I'm talking about, who he allegedly committed adultery against, the man put her away. And Zabak being a man, a year after he, or a 10 months to a year after the guy puts her away, gives the guy a call and informs him that he's now dealing with her, right? But the man put her away. That woman is Zabak's wife to this day, right? But the man put her away. So then once they have a problem with Zabak, now they're calling him an adulterer for taking something. But when you give a woman a bill of divorce, what does Deuteronomy 24 say? She can go and be another man's wife. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechah HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other elders, Akim, you brethren, you followers of the truth. And let me say shalom to the elect. I want to go here on a response, actually off of a comment. And um, there was someone who left a comment about One West. You know, did One West write the Bible? And um, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but uh, the comment was off. I'm going to just get right to it. The comment was off of uh, the video I did with um the response of guerrilla hebrew um response to a elder apostle harv gms video live so i said well okay i did the video and then uh one of his followers if not someone in the camp and this is why you got to be careful about being on the fence or you're you're following someone and they have a total different doctrine right or what you believe to be you know when you come into the truth you automatically understand that the bible you know this is about the whole book and then you see someone says well you ain't got to call on the name of the lord then you get see one says oh, the book of hebrews is unauthorized okay which is um really epistles off of paul and um timothy so uh, and even uh, say, sayings or quotes from David, you know, so uh, you would have to think about a guy like that, okay? So anyway, this man's name is Marcus Thomas commented. He said, you talking about a wife swap that never happened, okay? You speculating and reaching for excuses. People see through these weak, you know, videos. So I want to talk to that before the next comment when he talked about One West. So it's like a two-part video. And um, he went into the, if you looked at the, the previous video I did on them, I never said that it, they were actually wife swapping. Okay. I said, according to that time, you know, when women knew, he quoted Deuteronomy 24 of our heritage. But Jeremiah 17 and 4 said we would discontinue from our heritage. And now we're in a time where you will have women who are coming to the truth and men who will have a lot of the world on them. So, and I also spoke the fact that um, on even Zabak's page, there was adultery on the, on the comment boards. At least I believe to be. I can't be 100%. Um, there was different women fighting on the comment board for Zabak. Talking about they uh they burn for Zabak. Now I don't know if these women who are saying this have other um, husbands or whatever the case may be, but it was proven that um, in HOI that this took place, and you know they repented or whatever happened. We don't want to keep bringing that up, but this is where the, the rabbit hole, so to speak, always goes. So in the defense of what we teach. We never said that. We didn't ever even forward it. He said we forwarded the um, the hypocrisy or the, um, you know, just forward the lies or whatever. When the man, whoever, yeah, I'm not going to say their name on this video. <clears throat> um, 
And Jake says came out and admittedly, openly admitted that was going on, and that's what happened. So what I was saying is to alleviate alleviate all the confusion. <clears throat> you know, if you are with a brother, right, and you you know y'all know each other, and he puts away his wife, it's probably not a good idea, even after a year, to go pick up the tracks and go be with it, go be with his wife. Now we go according to the law, but we're caught talking about this is why Paul uh, had to smooth out a lot of things, and he was talking about um, certain things about the law, you know, because Jake um, was taking advantage of the law and a disadvantage uh, against the law. So this was Paul as the mediator. Through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, straightening these things out. And all we said is uh, when I s sat down with an apostle and some elders, but mainly an apostle, who, who spoke, you know, who, who told me that, you know, these things kind of went on in one west. So I would say that it's not a good, good idea to justify something like this and, and pull scriptures and say, okay, it's okay if a man put away his wife, then you can pick up and um tackle tackle it back on i mean you know get her and this is what paul was talking about and this is why we go into these letters first corinthians um seven and um nine and eight i say therefore to the unmarried and widows it is good for them if they be e abide even as i being alone separate right but if they cannot contain let them marry for it is better to to marry than to burn right and unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled, reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Because we seen this and, um, I've witnessed it, well, not personally in this camp, but I've seen it in other other camps where, you know, you have the woman who looks at the next big speaker, the great speaker. See, a lot of you guys bring the truth, the world into the truth. And this was what uh, that Paul was speaking about and what, what I'm speaking about now. Using uh, scriptures to justify getting with other women that have um that may have had a wife right and i never said that they were actually swapping wives i said that we did videos on adultery and even in with us we did videos that happened even in gms that had adultery right and guys that say okay well that's why i don't get no camps well you just don't expose your stuff and you just don't say it but it happens and we're just trying to say um, that the focus now on is the prophecies and not to be concerned. That's why Paul said those that have wives be as though they had none. Right? So anyway, um, you know, I just wanted to speak on that and just clear up a couple of things of what these guys do. And how the behavior of um, an out of order doctrine. Let's go on to his next comment. He says, one, well, I said just, I forgot what I said. I left the comment. But anyway, I'm just going with what he says. He said, one West didn't write the Bible. And one West had plenty of flaws, like everyone else. So we're going to stop right there. One West didn't write the Bible. No, technically, one West didn't write the Bible. But the men of one West, we believe, has and really the most high wrote the bible you know he just used men and prophets to um the scripture says that spiritual men was moved by the holy ghost to write these um you know these letters and the prophecies but those men are back you know the men are back who wrote a lot of this we don't know who they are but they're back because of reincarnation i believe sakari teaches that as well it says and one west had plenty of flaws 
right? But the thing about it is we did wake up through one West. It did, we, we have awoken. So that was necessary. Not to say it didn't have flaws, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. And he says, um, everyone else, he said, flaws like everyone else. Let brothers learn from their mistakes. And see, here is the problem that I try to go into. If nobody, Lord, the scripture says the Lord chastises who he loves. If we're not telling Sakari to, re, you know, we're telling him to repent, change his ways, which this has been going on for, for a long period of time. And to cut it out, you know, and stop when things get normal, you know, you get up, set up some interview and you get up there and then you got to bring up uh, the, the apostles, you know, apostle to all. You just got to bring it back up and just, you know, start controversy when there's prophecies going on. It's, it's not necessary. All that. I'm the priest and I'm the high priest and I'm this and I'm that. That's prideful. OK, so let's go back. Then he says, um, um, learn from their mistakes and grow. So we're supposed to just stop and just say, okay, this man's talking about books of the uh, the Apostle Paul. Everything he wrote wasn't of the Most High. And um, it doesn't say, thus saith the Lord. Even Yahweh Shah, when he said things, it didn't always say, thus saith the Lord. But anyway, then, you know, you had uh, the book of Hebrews. And we don't know where that came from. This is crazy, man. Um, it says, stop acting like a damn C R A C E R anxious and went on to something else. And this is what they do instead of just accepting rebuke. This is this whole group <clears throat> and it follows every, all of them. I can't say all of them, <clears throat> but this is what they do. They'll come out, mention apostle to her name or any other apostle start controversy and then when we come back in defense, then it goes to the, all this crazy stuff. And then now we're we're haters and you hate your brother. But this guy is sitting up there saying hateful stuff. And then we had a brother that was attacked out of this group. But we hate our brother. Anyway, let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let's go to John 16. I'm going back to the question. Did um, One West write the Bible? John 16. Um... And looks like 13. Uh, however, let me see here. It says, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. So the truth is guided and in motion, right? So he will guide you in all truth. So you're not just going to get it. Well, let me go back to John. It says he will guide you into all truth. Let me go to John 16 and 12 first. It says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot, ye cannot bear them now. So it takes time. This is why One West was set up. Going back to Abba Bivens and One West was set up. All the way on down to our apostles and elders and the brothers and, and the teachers. You know, because the truth has to grow. That's why he says he will guide you. If you're sitting, when you get in a GPS, a car, you hit the GPS, it's a guide. You haven't finished your destination. When you go to Matthew 5 and 48, it says, be ye perfect, even as your father in heaven is imperfect. And when you go into that word perfection, it really, it really means completion. Okay. It means completion. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 1 and 7. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place where whence the rivers come thither they return again all things are full of labor man cannot utter utter it the eye is not satisfied with seeing nor the ear filled with hearing the thing that have been it is uh it is that which it shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun it says is there anything whether it may be said seeing this is new it has been already been of old, which was before us. Then here it go, verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Right? So this clearly is going into reincarnation. This clearly is going to those prophets of old are back today. And the writers are back. Some may be in the spirit world and some may be here today. But clearly... Um, 
it's everything is reincarnated, right? So the Most High sent His Son to be the ultimate sacrifice in baptismal. So uh, through His sacrifice, we are to be saved through faith. We technically are um, following the law to to the best of our ability, and but that's the sacrifice. That's why Paul said, "Present your body as a living sacrifice." Romans fifteen and four it says. For whatsoever thing were written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? So, you got a lot of guys that, that are um, claiming to be outwardly beautiful and the entertainment and looks good, but inwardly, they're wicked. You know? Matthew 23 and 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you, uh, let me go on to twenty-five, Shalakia. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and in the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Right? Verse twenty-seven. Um, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly but are within full of dead men's bones and of, of all uncleanliness even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity anyway that's all i pretty much have on that shallow one